Gordon Siren has been called the father of modern Aboriginal art, but the galleries are reluctant to buy and show his paintings, so he's burning one of them in protest. With your work, obviously, is it for some people at least, it's just too political. Is that a fair comment? That is, that, that is fair enough comment, yeah. So people just won't buy it because it's, it's telling things, making them uncomfortable, it's telling them stories they don't really want to hear. Yeah, yeah. but I do paint other paintings which, which, which they should be quite comfortable with. Yes, but it's the politics, I think, that were the concerning things. I mean, going back to your deaths in custody paintings, nobody really wanted to know about them, did they? No, they didn't. No, so you couldn't get galleries to take them, you couldn't get an exhibition up? No, <laughs> no way. Couldn't. So, in a sense, that's why you had to start your own gallery, I that's suppose. Right, I <laughs> the Blackfella Dreaming Gallery and Museum came to Bangalore on the north coast of New South Wales from Darlinghurst in 2003. Its creators were Gordon Siren, a well-known Aboriginal artist, and his wife Elaine. And now the collection's up here. Gordon, tell me a bit about how it started. I decided that uh, after showing my paintings in other galleries and so forth, I decided that I want to start an, uh, an Aboriginal gallery for myself, buy an Aboriginal, to sell Aboriginal art. And that way I could, could offer Aboriginal artists better percentages. But the museum aspect of it, did you start collecting specifically or was it just an idea that came? It was an idea that came over the years. We, we gradually collected and collected and then after a while we had such a collection, we decided we, we have to have a museum. Is there a special theme to the collection or just as much good Aboriginal art as you could find or the things that you especially liked? It was a bit of both, I suppose, uh, good Aboriginal art, and plus things we liked. Mm. Your work's very political, obviously, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment, but um, a lot of traditional Aboriginal art isn't political in the same way. It, it tells stories, it's about the culture and the tradition. Um, did you find, is there a clash there somewhere that you had to break away from that tradition? There was a clash between me and, and a lot of people as that, part of outside society uh, that weren't artists uh, because people were, they weren't used to what, what we call urban Aboriginal art uh, and they say that urban is refined and uh, that's what mine is, it's more political scene and stuff like that, it's not dots and dashes. Okay, let's go in and have a look at some of it. This was a painting that uh, some Aboriginal people uh, were selling at the Olympics uh, and, uh, and the gentleman decided to get only four and a half. <coughs> now this is a very beautiful painting here where the wildflowers were and we can see in the background there are Aborigines their heads just poking above the flowers but also when we come down a bit there are black fairies in the flowers and this is a sort of tradition reversal I suppose we never think of fairies as black in Western tradition why did you start doing that sort of thing? I've been looking for white fairies I never ever saw none so I thought well just just as enough possibility of there being black fairies so I got tired of seeing white fairies, so I decided I'd do black fairies. Fair enough. And of course, one of your most famous paintings, The Judgment of His Peers, does a similar kind of role reversal thing. You've got the, the white man in court, surrounded by black judges, black lawyers, black jurors. Um, this, this kind of irony is obviously very much something you concentrate on in a political aspect of it. I, I guess I do because it's, it's all part of Aboriginal, Aboriginal life or urban Aboriginal culture. It's something which I experienced firsthand uh, through the legal system and, uh, and I challenged the jury system at one stage. And, uh, but somebody told me uh, I, I wasn't black enough to be black and the other guy said I wasn't white enough to be white. And I asked to be judged by my peers. And of course you were very much involved in the deaths in custody inquiry too, weren't you? 
Yes, I, I was. Uh, I was also uh, the president of the Aboriginal Deaths in Custody for a while, and, and uh, uh, we had a lot of trouble with the Aboriginal Deaths in Custody. And matter of fact, I closed that down or closed the books at one stage so they would elect a new committee. I wasn't very happy with the, the previous one. Mm. And that inspired a lot of your art since then, didn't it? Yeah. Well, my 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 art really is about it's about my my trip through journey through life, I guess. Mm. You've got a lot of other modern Aboriginal artists in this gallery, but a lot of them seem to be very angry. Is that part of modern Aboriginal urban art? A lot of Aboriginals are very angry. They are angry, I suppose, because the main thing, uh, their, their land was usurped of them, and now, in some cases, their culture has been usurped. Nobody tells us they're going to take it, they just move on it and move on it. And, and uh, you're getting people with uh, uh, Aboriginality papers, and they're not Aboriginal people. Mm. You've got one of your paintings shows the redcoats arriving in a boat, and alongside them uh, a red-coated Santa Claus in much the same sort of outfit. <laughs> Is this the way you see the invasion? It's the way I see it a, bit, a little bit, you know. He's, uh, uh, it's like giving you something in one hand and taking it off in the other. Well, of course, you've turned that round in some of your other paintings too. There's okay. one that shows the, the, what looks like the first fleet landing, except when you look at it, the first fleet's composed of blackfellas under their flag, and that's the whites greeting them with some trepidation on the shore. That, that was for, that was for the, the general population at large, so as I could see it from another perspective. Mm. As well as your own things and modern things in the collection, there's, there are some other very fine paintings. There are barks, um, there's, a, there, there's a George Warren bull there. Um, you've got Sir Clifford Possum canvas. Um, is this, as I asked you before, if this was, was your own taste, but do you, do you find you can appreciate both forms, the modern form and the, that you do yourself and these old style painters? I, I can appreciate both forms and I, and I need the old style because it gives me a, a solid base foundation mm. in the island. Mm. And you've got some sort of folky things here too, um, dolls and uh, um, this, there's this uh, Aboriginal head with a noose around its neck which you picked up in a local junk shop I gather. Yes we did. We, we, mm. we, various places we travelled to. Yes, it's a, that's a political statement too of course. How many pieces altogether are there in the museum collection, Gordon? Any idea? We, I, I know we've got a, we, I think we've got a, quite a, a few hundred books, things like that, to start. Mm -hmm. uh, all the books are not out because uh, they're, they're very valuable and uh, they don't even have them in some big mm -hmm. libraries, I believe. And apart from the books, uh, paintings, artefacts? Paintings, artefacts, yeah. We, or even we photographs? Have. Photographs, and we have we had that. I'll say like that. Mm. breastplate. Think, yes, the breastplate and the ball and chain from yeah. the old days too. Yeah. Yeah. Teacher, when yes. teacher, when a good little lady, we will now make you yes. a king. Oh, gee, thanks, Massa. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Massa. <laughs> Do you know if there are any other collections like this in Australia or anywhere else in the world for that matter? Uh, not, not that I know of, but then they tell me there, there isn't, there isn't a, an Aboriginal uh, museum just started off in Paris somewhere or something like that, I believe. Well, that's a world ethnic museum in which there's a lot of, a lot, there's a yeah. big section devoted to Australian Aboriginal stuff here. Yeah. This is a teaching painting, I guess, is it? I don't know if the name is teaching people how to hunt the kangaroo and watch your This is an unusual little book, obviously a fairly rare one. It's called The Australian Aboriginal as a Human Being. Obviously in those times there were still some people who had some doubts. But the quotation on the front of it from a guy called Ramsey Smith, which is from the Commonwealth Yearbook for 1909, is an interesting one. He says, the problem of what to do with the race, the most interesting at present on earth, and the least deserving to be exterminated by us, and the most wronged at our hands, is not a difficult one to solve, were a solution really desired. A man a bit ahead of his time, I think. But I would say that 
I would be the only the only Aboriginal I feel safe enough to say in, mm. in Australia that's got a, a, uh, a museum apart from my gallery. Mm. So what's going to happen to it? I, I, what I was hoping would happen to it, I, it's very, I think places like this are very, very important, especially to uh, 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 the school children and, and it's very good for educational mm. purposes and, uh, and it's very important for, 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 uh, for uh, uh, fixing things up such as discrimination and racism in, 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 uh, in society and it, and it needs, the only way we're going to ever get to it is by, or fix it is, uh, I believe, is by facing the truth. We've mm. got to face the truth about history and, you know, what's happening. And urban Aboriginal art is one way of, of showing people. Yes, but you're not going to be able to keep it here at Bangalore for much longer, are you? It needs to be housed in, in a building which is more suitable. Uh, and uh, and that, uh, I suppose, uh, earned an income to support it. Mm. A lot of people have came and looked at it, have been showing interest, but no, no nothing definite yet. No, no one's come along and definitely want to buy it. We, at one stage, they were talking about taking us to the Harbour Foreshore Authority in Sydney, we were talking about us going to the rocks and mm. down there, but uh, we haven't heard back from them. And, uh, well, it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. It should certainly be part of that celebration. Yeah. Yes, well, it's, it is a unique collection, as, as you say, and I, I'd hate to see it having to be broken up and sold. So, anybody out there, here's your chance. Benefactors, philanthropists and just good Australians. Thank you very much, Gordon Sire. Thank you.